Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. We've done previous videos on, well, I'm totally stoked and excited about it, is Brownell's retro series of rifles. Um, the chat show they released their uh, BRN 601, they released the uh, XBRN 16. E1 and a BRN 16A1, and also a version of the XM177 E2. Uh, the first uh, series of videos that I did was us utilizing their parts to build one of their M16A1 or, B or their BRN 16A1 rifles. Uh, that was a three part series on an actual build. And then, uh, must have been not too long ago, a couple weeks or so ago, we released the one on the uh, BRN 601, which was their version of the 601. Today we're going to be talking about the uh, XBRN 16E1 and the BRN 16A1. Now, the rifle I'm showing you here, uh, I built this about, I don't know, three, three, four years ago. And this is my favorite of all of the M16 and M4 variations. Uh, this is the, this is a commercial version of the XM16E1, the first rifle that went to Vietnam uh, with the Army. Now, this rifle here uh, was built off of a no-deck upper and lower receiver and charging handle. Those stripped components are the only non-original parts. Every part that you see on this rifle is original Colt 1965 uh, era parts. Um, this rifle, is I do not fire it because of well, one of several reasons. One, if you look at the cost of what it is to try to find original Colt parts for these uh, from 1965, they're astronomical. And second of all, this has all the components that were original and caused problems with the rifle. For instance, this barrel on here is the original uh, 1 in 12 barrel that caused the problems. It was not chrome plated at all. Uh, this was the one that caused the uh, chambers to become corroded and it caused serious failures to extract. The gas tube was the softer material prior to the stainless steel uh, that was prone to damage and corrosion. It has the original uh, Edgewater buffer spring in here that did not work properly with the high cyclic rate of the ball powder. It has the original chrome plated bolt carrier with the original bolt, which is not shot peened to deal with the higher rate of fire. And it also has a larger firing pin. You had the original fiberite pistol grip, the original uh, fiberite stock with no trap door, uh, the original safety, the original firing control mechanisms, everything. So this is a completely uh, original rifle that... Uh, I don't fire because of that reason. Uh, those parts are all very difficult to come across, and they're not rated for the modern ammunition with ball propellant. So we're going to forward up to January of this year with the introduction of the XBRN 16E1. Again, I was ecstatic when I saw this because, again, my favorite rifle. Uh, this rifle here is basically a reproduction of that rifle, however... What it is, it is modified for current use. This is a rifle that's designed for you to go out and shoot with modern day ammunition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this one from butt to muzzle. We're gonna show uh, exactly what it is. But again, I was just ecstatic. You know, it's it's amazing when you look at these these rifles here and you compare, you know, the really light, you know, maybe a seven pound or so, uh, what it is to the current, you know, nine or 10 pound M16A4 with all the optics on it. You see where you've, really gone backwards from going with a rifle that was supposed to be designed to be as light as possible to the current, which is extremely heavy. So looking at the back, Brownells has introduced a, a, the, a brand new version uh, of the stock pistol grip and handguards. Due to the fact that the parts, which, you know, 10 years ago, you couldn't give away M16A1 parts. Now they are like unicorns. And when you do find them, they're extremely expensive. So the stock that they have is the original style stock with no trap door, which is designed. You also have the sling swivel that goes in the back rather than the fixed uh, of the A1. You have uh, the, this is more of like a Zytel. This is a much stronger, more durable material than the original ones were. Uh, the same thing with the handguards. It's a stronger Zytel type material. And you ask why it's not exact, because the materials that were used back then are no longer in use today. Those don't exist any longer. Uh, they are obsolete for many, many, many years. But uh, you can purchase these parts separately uh, to build your own your own rifle as well. The barrel is a uh, is a standard. It's actually made by Faxon, which is an incredible barrel company. Uh, it does have the nitride finish on, on it with a finish over it to give it the parkerized look. You do have the uh, three prong uh, flash suppressor. You have the original front sight base along with the round front sight post. The barrel is a one in twelve inch twist, which is what the original ones were. So that ammunition, this is designed specifically for the 55 grain ball ammunition. 
Um, I have seen some that you can get in one and seven, which, you know, one and seven is obviously better for these days because people are using all different kinds of ammunition, every, you know, everywhere from 55 grain up to 80 grain. But this is the original one and 12, what the rifle was designed around for the current uh, 55 grain full metal jacket. Uh, the upper receiver, as you can see, is A1. Uh, you have a teardrop forward assist. Now, the ejection port cover is the more is the modern style. Uh, that's one part that uh, nobody uh, I've seen yet has been able to reproduce the older style ejection port cover. Um, in fact, if you see some of the uh, rifles I've I've seen, you know, through the U.S. Or U.S. arsenals and whatnot, you will see some of the more modern type. Uh, ejection port covers on them they don't have the hump on here to keep it from uh, going into the lower receiver so when you close it you're uh, you damage the ejection port cover it still has that little uh hump on it here uh, but some of the older ones don't have that but they do have the reinforced uh, latch system on there lower receiver as you can see we have the partial fence now the original 601 uh, the front pivot pin was removable and they knew from the beginning the army knew from the beginning that was going to be a mistake uh, because they would get lost uh, during maintenance uh, in the field. So they wanted to have this captured. So this original rib on here with this little hole in here where you see uh, is where you put lubricant uh, for the spring so the spring doesn't seize in here for the detent. That was designed there solely so you could put a captive front pivot pin. The lower receiver is, as you can see, it's, it's A1. It does not have the A2 profile. Uh, standard trigger, uh, standard uh, safety. And the bolt carrier is also designed by Brownells. Uh, to be chrome plated. It is an M16 style uh, bolt carrier. Uh, it's chrome. This is the this is a matte chrome plating. Uh, when you look at these rifles, uh, the original Colt rifles, uh, you'll see some differences in uh, the bolt carriers. Now, chrome plating is chrome plating, but depending on how the metal is prepared, you'll have either a shiny chrome plating or you'll have uh, the matte, which is what you see right here. The matte uh, was always the more uh, sought after because it was less reflective than the original chrome plated ones were. So you can see them in both ways, but Brownells chose to go with the uh, matte chrome. And the bolts are matte particle inspected, which means uh, the bolts are uh, fired with a 70,000 PSI proof cartridge. And they're checked uh, with a magnetic particle inspection, which is basically a uh, oil, which has little metal shavings. Uh, when, once it's magnetized, uh, those shavings will go to any stress fractures uh, in the, that are located in the metal. And that will let you know if there's any issues or not. Properly staked carrier key inside the bolt, uh, inside the carrier key are also chrome plated. The really nice thing about this rifle is it was designed to shoot. Unlike the one that I showed you first, which was built of all those original parts and all those original components that uh, were not designed to work with the ball propellant, the uh, XBRN 16E1 was designed for you to be able to shoot. And uh, I've been, like I said, I've, I probably got about maybe 600 rounds or so through this thing so far. Uh, I've had it out a couple times. I, like I said, I, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, it shoots better than my eyesight will let me uh, let me shoot. Uh, the fit and finish are excellent on it. Um, there's been some change in the finishes for Brownells. Uh, Brownells originally had more of a black finish, uh, unlike the, like the Nodex Bud like you see uh, I showed you in the beginning. Um, they recently started to switch over to making a more uh, gray uh, type finish to get it to be more period exact. So that's something that they're working on. Uh, they're also working on additional things. The safety that comes with the uh, rifles has a little bit of a notch on it. Uh, which is more like the modern A2. Brownells has gone as far as to get all the all the tooling and everything to, to remake the original uh, type safeties without that little notch on it. Brownells is continuing to evolve in a retro line, which is something that I'm really really ecstatic over as well, because they're just they're just going further and further with it, and it's enabling those guys who really appreciate this older stuff to uh, to be able to get this stuff again, because the old stuff is all dried all dried up. Now the cost of the rifle is twelve ninety nine, and it's the same for all the all the models. You know, uh, through my last videos and everything, I had people say, "Well, that's too expensive." There's something you need to understand about this: is you are recreating old and outdated parts. Uh, this is not like you can go to somebody who's making an M4. I'm going to order, you know, uh, this pistol grip or this outdated stock or outdated handguards. Or even upper, or even the receivers, which are outdated. If you were to buy a new A1 style upper today, it's going to have the hump on here. It's not going to be the original. And then to go out and have an entire new barrel created, uh, it goes back in time to the one in twelve, where nobody makes one in twelve barrels anymore. It's because of the ammunition. So you're looking at basically uh, redesigning and redeveloping outdated parts and putting them into production for 
you know, pretty much a smaller production run where it costs more as well. So quite frankly, the $12.99 is not that too far off of base. You will find it cheaper than that. That's the MSRP. But, you know, considering this is not built up of parts that, you're, that are gathered from all over like a standard M4. As you can get standard M4s for six for seven, 800 bucks right now. But again, you're looking at companies who are making mass numbers of those parts that are all the same and throwing them together versus having to re-engineer and redesign all these components. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one to the range. We're going to take a look and see how she fires. Again, you know, this is, uh, this is iron sights. This is old school. Uh, my eyes aren't what they used to be, but uh, we'll see how it shoots. Now, as you can see, that rifle worked flawlessly. Um, again, that is, it's my favorite one. There's something about the nostalgia of, you know, this was the rifle used in the Idrang Valley. This was the one that was used in all those early days of Vietnam. In fact, it was probably used right up until 1967 when it was replaced by the Model A1. Uh, what we have here is a version, their version of the uh, BRN-16A1, which is uh, M16A1. It differs from the XM-16 in, first off, you have a complete magazine well fence. Now what happened was was with the original O1s and the uh, XM16E1 because the magazine release was not uh, covered there was no there was nothing to protect it the rifle was dropped on this side it would eject the magazine. So this boss as they call it was designed for that purpose to protect it from that. This still has the original uh, style stock on it because Brynells does not make yet. I'm going to say yet. I mean who knows what they're going to be doing but this does have the older style uh, swivel with the the butt that's it's, it's flat here there's no compartment in it now this barrel this one here utilizes the uh standard birdcage flash suppressor uh the 112 inch barrel it uses the same hand guards but if you'll notice the bolt carrier group it's black because the m16a1s uh for the most part all use black uh, the real real early ones you may have seen some chrome but uh as the tdp would be for the m16a1 it never had chrome uh, and it always had the, the, the fence on here. This was probably around 1967, uh, 68 time period is when you started seeing the M16A1s come out. Now, uh, this uses the same barrel, the same faction barrel, uh, which that one does, but with a different muzzle device on it. Uh, these have the nitriding process, so uh, according to many companies, this is more durable and reliable and, cor and corrosion resistant than even the chrome was. But again, it's, it's a 1 in 12. Uh, that's basically the only differences between the XM16E1 and the M16A1 versions of the Brownells is muzzle device and uh, the lower receiver and the bolt carrier group. We'll take this one out to the range and we'll see how this one shoots. As you saw from the uh, video, the only difference was is I did throw a chrome-plated bolt carrier in this thing. Now, uh, anybody who's watched my videos knows that I am a big fan of chrome plating in the bolt carrier. In fact, uh, this one does have a chrome-plated bolt carrier. I just threw the uh, the black one in there because that's how it's going to come from Brownells. I throw a, a, I throw a chrome carrier in this one. This is what uh, I use in it. You know, chrome definitely has the... I guess the Vietnam War to it. It's the way the original ones were. That's the original way Gene Stoner designed them. It was with chrome. 
And the main reason for the removal of the chrome was two. Uh, first off was cost, but second of all, and probably more so than anything, it was the fact that uh, if the chrome wasn't placed on properly and you had any kind of a crack, moisture would get underneath the chrome and it would cause hydrogen embrittlement, which would mean it would flake off. And during that time uh, in, the, in the 60s, the capacity or the ability to produce the chrome plating process in a consistent manner was less than acceptable. Um, you would have some batches that would come through that were good, some that were bad. There was just not a, a consistency there like there is now. You buy a chrome completed carrier, now the process has been perfected over the years, so you don't have the, the corrosion issues. To me, I just, I, just, I just love the chrome. But the, again, the black was just put in here to show you the way it's going to come from the factory. But uh, Brownells has really uh, done a great job for as far as recreating these old rifles. You know, there's other companies who have made attempts to do, at doing it. Uh, however, you're still using M16A2 type lower receivers. They're not the real lower receivers. They're built off of used barrels. You know, you would not necessarily have period correct uh, furniture. And if they were, the stuff was really old. I mean, you're looking at parts. You know, last time these handguards were made was around 85, 86. was the last time the uh, triangular handguards, this pistol grip, and this type of a stock were made. So everything that you're seeing is going to be at least, you know, uh, 30 years old or 40 years old. So finding stuff in new condition, and when you do find it in new condition, those prices you're giving up your firstborn to get. Now, all the parts that you see here, receivers, everything is available from Brownells for you to purchase if you want to build your own rifle. Uh, say you decided you wanted to get your own original parts kit, and you, but you wanted uh, some, some newer components. Uh, every one of these is there. When you go into our description box, you will see every component for these two rifles listed in there and their Brownells part numbers, so you, you, can, you can order those parts uh, specifically. I've shot their uh, XBRN16E1, as you saw right here, and of course their uh, BRN16A1. Uh, the next rifle we're going to be testing for this one is going to be their uh, XM177 uh, carbine. Hopefully we'll be seeing that one relatively soon. But as I said, you see, I'm, I am I am ecstatic over this because, you know, I really, really like these original rifles. Um, just the original nostalgia. I just, I, I just have that appreciation for these early rifles. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.